Welcome back, Akron fans! Shadow 33 with another exhibition match. It's time between Monkuki and Elliot N, who we haven't seen in a while, actually. Yeah, Elliot N is an old guard player, but he hasn't really shown up. Also known as EJG D&D, although I'll call him Elliot N for the remainder of the game. There's going to be on Island, which is one of the first maps of Akron at all, and is also one of the most open maps. So, Monkey starting on the east side of the map, Elliot N on the west side of the map, and the map, like I said, very, very open. Everything here, except for the obvious cliffs, is pathable by everything. You path up here, go down here, go around. There's, it's basically flat. I mean, there's obviously speed differences and such, but other than a few cliffs here and there, it's everything can be walked on. Like I said, it is a very open map. But to be honest, I think it would actually make a really good 0k map. I'd have to think about it, but, you know, I think porting it over would not be a bad idea. I think it would fit pretty well. I hadn't thought about that until just now. But yeah, anyway. We do have Monkuki as Vekir, as usual. Probably going to send out his imagery straight into Elliden's base. Well, Elliden going for CISO, getting up quick resources, and... See, well, three LC and one... Flex. Probably going to be LC right now, but yeah. Okay, so four LC at the moment. Well, Special Ops Marine go in to scout. And yeah, like I said, this is also a very small map. Rushing is extremely simple. The main path is completely pathable. Possibly a bit of a design mistake. I'm really not sure. I mean, given Akron's pathfinding troubles that it used to have, it's fine now, but when I built this map, Pathfinding was a huge problem, and I've updated it since to take advantage of improved pathfinding, but didn't change the fundamental design any. So, anyway, Monkuki sending his imagery as normal will be most of the very definitely proxying. I'd be surprised if he didn't, so admittedly he might run out of his infantry and not be able to do so. CISO infantry packs a massive punch, and Monkuki might decide not even to bother. We'll see though Elliot N, from his point of view, arriving at Monkuki's base and nothing has happened. Monkuki, from his own point of view, however, about a minute or half a minute down from there, is coming in with all of his units. There is one Marine left in Elliot N's base, but the rest of Elliot N's forces have gone down, and Elliot N jumping back to when that attack happens. Spotting that fight, what will he do to remicro? Will he. Looks like the special officer is already behind. No, he's not even remicroing. He is avoiding the fight entirely, letting Monkuki come to him. That is probably a mistake. Monkuki loves his proxies, and being allowed to make a proxy foundation... I mean, we're going to see foundation creep, and that foundation creep is going to win the game. Because Elliot N, I don't think quite realizes how much Monkuki loves his foundation creep. Absolutely loves it. Adores it. It's what Monkuki does. It is his day job, is foundation creeping. And it begins! At the two-minute mark, we have the first foundation being built up, and Monkuki has enough resources to just spread those across... We'll want to spread those across quickly, though, as soon as he gets the chance. And Tethvir is probably going to die inevitably, but the Shinvir at least will have a chance, assuming the foundations do creep. But Monkuki actually not being that aggressive with the foundation creep, surprisingly enough. See if he changes anything up in this attack. He might send out the Zionvir second. Or no, not even sending out the Zionvir. Instead, he is switching over. Is he echoing the foundation creep? Because he was able to get in on that foundation creep pretty handily. But it looks like he may very well try to echo it. A little surprising, he's not sending the imagery down to the south side and then coming up and foundation creeping from there, or from the north side. But instead going straight through the center where Elliot N is also going, and trying to plow through Elliot N's forces, which clearly is not working especially well. I just am surprised Monkuki isn't going for that. As Monkuki, with the resources he has, could build up another foundation in the main base, use that to support the Zion Veer, fend off Elliot N's infantry while building his foundation creep in Elliot N's base, preventing the, Z the Zion Veer, sorry, preventing the Shin Veer and Teth Veer from being killed while attacking Elliot's base. And there we go. Now the Shin and Tethvir are moving south, though admittedly they are going to go through this ramp here, but they should be able to avoid any interference at all. Elliot moving his units back, so there's not going to be a problem there. And Elliot does, however, spot them. In this case, however, no. This iteration does not happen, and Elliot will ultimately not destroy the Shin and Tethvir. Or at least that's what it appears, though. Admittedly, yeah, this is this is further than the past, so Monkey does save a Shin and Tethvir while building his main base, getting his 5 and 1 right now. Nothing flex. Well, Elliot N has still 3 and 1, with 1 being flex between QP and Liquid Crystal, but honestly, Elliot N has so few resources, I don't think he quite realizes the current meta. 
Like the current meta is build six resource processors, then do other stuff. Even on, on the map like Island, you could have supposed to go for the four RP rush, which is what he's doing. But Monokuki is doing something much more typical. Like five and one is much more typical for rushing. Going three and one, especially not going for that aggressive of a rush. He's not. Elliot is not going for an aggressive rush, so I think Elliot is just way behind in the metagame. He probably should be building a factory here and one fewer importer at this stage. Though if he's going for an armory rush, the Catalyst style infantry attack, this would be the way to start out, but this is three minutes in and there's only two armories. Going for the Catalyst style usually involves... Well, if you're going to have those armories, it's going to be right next to your opponent's base. That is the proxy style. And Monkuki just setting up here, going to block off this expansion, though admittedly that is not where Elliot is expanding. He's expanding to the northwest, not to the southwest, but still blocking that if and when it comes up while getting the depot up, getting the Zion Pulsar up, getting Skip Teleport on the Zion Pulsar, 330 mark. We will have our first Zion Pulsar going for an attack, and from there, it will be a fairly powerful attack too. I mean, the armories are a bit of a threat. Season infantry are surprisingly powerful against Zion Pulsars. Like, against half a dozen Marines and mechs, it doesn't last long. Like, I am not kidding. It, it's pretty easy to lose a Zion Pulsar to half a dozen Marines and, not mechs, sorry, Marines and Special Luffs. Mechs offer nothing for anti-ground, but or very little for anti-ground. They're very, very low damage anti-ground. They're anti-air. But Marines and Special Ops, oh boy. A Zion Pulsar jumping into here would die. A Zion Pulsar jumping into here would be fine. Three Zion Pulsars in here would also be fine, but it looks like Monkuki is just going for the one at the moment and has no further ones built. Currently six and three on his resources, one of them being flex, while Elliot N remaining three and one Actually, sorry, three and, sorry, four and one. Four LC, one QP. Well, one flex on QP. Sending out the infantry, about half a dozen going forward. A little bit out of position, going to the southeast to try to block off, or rather deny any expansions that may have started there. While the sort now the northwest expansion being denied by Monkuki, getting that RP, closing it up with the Zion Pulsar, and really there's no defense there. All of the infantry are over to the south. They're way out of position to defending against that. And a comm hub... Very nice to see that. Com hub over to the southwest. If anyone has watched this for any length of time, they know how much I love com hubs and centers and how much I just love the scouting buildings. I love using them myself, and this is a great place to put them. The only better place I could possibly think of would be down right here because it's slightly closer, but this is good too. This is just fine. Seeing the entire base, or very nearly the entire base, this importer and RP are not visible, or this importer is maybe visible. The RP isn't. Still... Able to know exactly what Elliot ends up to. And able to stop it too. I mean, like I said, the Northwest expansion has been denied. Elliot N, he's sending... Okay, not quite denied. Because the infantry are coming in, this is what I meant by half a dozen infantry will kill a Zion Pulsar. Still lost a few in the process and fended off the attack. That's more important. Monku, he managed to get a Zion Tercher up. That will tear apart everything. He needs to get rid of the Special Ops first, but has enough health to kill everything. And with some Zion Pulsar support... That should basically do it. And that should basically win the game at that point. And I mean, if... Oh man, if Monkey had Skip Teleport on that Zion Pulsar... He did, actually. If he uses Skip Teleport on the Zion Pulsar... And there it goes! I was about to say, he could use it to teleport down to the base as the infantry out of position. And that's exactly what he does. This is beta meta. Wow, this is Blast in the Past. Using Zion Pulsar, just jumping back and forth like that. That sort of Pulsar harass I have not seen in years. This is exciting. I have not seen a player really do this in a long time. I mean, maybe it's just the games I've casted haven't had it and everyone else has been doing it, but the games I've seen just... Yeah, you don't see this much anymore, but there it is. I suppose with imagery it can work against ATHCs, it can't really, but with imagery it certainly can. And yeah, that is... That is some old school way to play. And Elliot N, not even countering that, not even sending his units back, ultimately gets rid of the Zion Pulsar, but not without losing a fair amount of resources and a few infantry as well. Though admittedly, attacking the resource processor is not the best bet. Monkey, he is teleported around. A, no, he's sending a Zion Tertiary. He looks like he's teleported back to the Zion Pulsar. Yes, he has. Has not put into the depot yet. And I eat my words immediately. While Lancer comes in and no auto defense, no Teth of Ear, no Teth Pulsar. So that is not... Okay, never mind. Teth Pulsar is coming up. So very shortly now, that's not going to be a problem. But still, Zion Tertiary inside Elliot N's base. Now teleporting back. We'll be able to get rid of the Lancer, but needs to jump into the depot first. Heals up, and the Teth Pulsar is almost done. Probably the Zion Church of Zion Pulsar is going to teleport back into Elliot N's base and tear it apart. 
But Elliot N suspects something going down to the south. I don't see... No, he's not going to find the comm hub quite yet. The comm hub is cloaked, but special ops are detectors, so the cloaking is of no use at this stage. But the death balls are going to get rid of the Lancer. Surprisingly, though, the Zion units have not been teleported back. Not going on for the attack yet, surprisingly enough. But Elliot N going... No, he's just going straight for the offense. Not going to attack the suspected comm hub or go down the south. I guess he expected to be in this area. So I was exactly wrong. This has been a bad area to put it in, and where it was is a really good area. Now, the only upside is the is the proximity, but honestly, the fact that the terrain is like this. Units can't see uphill if it's out of line of sight. Like If terrain would block a unit's sight, it can't see that. So that gives the comp hub a great position right there. Okay, and we have a teleport back. Zion Pulse are teleporting back into the base. Zion Church are staying in Mon Cookie's base. Elliot N, however, has to deal with the Zion Pulsar in his own base. Attacking the armory and the Zion Treasure. There we go. The Zion Treasure is joining it. Oops. There's the plus. The Zion Treasure is joining it. Will be able to tear apart the base. Elliot N basically has lost his entire base. And Elliot N jumping back here, going for an attempted base trade, but this probably won't work. I mean, the Teth Pulsar will stop the Lancer. Now, the infantry are a bit of a problem, but this is Vecchio we're talking about. Monku can jump back, destroy the infantry, and then come back into Elliot N's base. And finish it off. Not much can be said there, though the southeast expansion is going to be destroyed. If Monkey doesn't do anything to address it, it certainly looks like it's going to be destroyed. More lances aren't coming as well, but Monkey really doesn't have much to worry about here. In fact, a couple Zion Pulsers coming in to deal with this. Zion Pulsar, Teth Pulsar can't do too much. Zion Turtle is still in Elliot N's base, but the Zion Pulsar has jumped back. Let's skip back. If Monkey is paying enough attention here, he can use the good old Depot Micro to keep that Zion Pulsar alive. And he is doing exactly that. Last minute jump there, but yes, it goes into the depot and two more Zion Pulsars to follow. This will be a not quite perfect defense. We'll lose a Zion Veer and possibly a couple of resource processors. But other than that, it's going to be a, it's going to work as a defense. And then from there, just needs to get rid of the special ops, get rid of the armory. And that'll basically be game. There'll be a factory left, there'll be mechs that's supposed to be built up and ATGs have come in as well to deal with the Zion Turcher. Well, deal with everything really. But especially the Zion Turtle, the fact they do have detection. However, five Zion Pulsars, none of which have skipped teleport, but still five Zion Pulsars, and Monkey is basically going to be laughing all the way to the bank because just needs to move them. No, six now. Just needs to move them into Elliot N's base, and that's game. Absolutely game. And in case you're wondering, this map is actually 256 by 256, but the rush distance, due to the center being perfectly passable, a direct line between bases does mean that it is still quite a knife fight, as we have seen now. All these Zion Pulsars, about seven of them right now. That is eight of them so far. That is more than enough. Monkey is just going to tear this apart. Actually has Gaytech now, so all of them do have skip teleport. Looks like he's just putting them all onto a single Teth Pulsar head, and we'll be skipping into the main base. As the Zion Turtle nearly gets killed, needs to jump back. That Zion Turtle needs to jump back to the or skip back to the depot, heal up, Skip back in. We'll see if it goes for that, though. Elliot, on the other hand, has not built anything new. Just building more and more... Oh, never mind. Has got machinery, so he's building Tornads, which is good, but a little late. I mean, the only upside is that there's no aerial control center for Monkuyi. Monkuyi has been very aggressive this entire time, has not gone for tech. In fact, his resources are starting to run low, too. At least Liquid Crystal is starting to run low. Cubeplasm is okay, but Liquid Crystal is low. And Foundation being built up, possibly for a Slipgate... No, definitely for a slipgate, if nothing else. I mean, it could be nothing. It could be for healing, but it's probably for a slipgate. And with that slipgate, I imagine we're going to be seeing, basically, this getting annihilated in the past. But no, it doesn't even matter. Mon Cookie going for the edge attack. Jump back to the 1046 mark near the unplayable past edge. And that is... That is basically game. One Tornado is up, a second Tornado to follow. But even with that, the Tornado will kill a couple of Zion Pulsars, and the Zion Beard inside will just finish them off. There's really nothing more to be said. Elliot then does have a few Marines run, wandering around the map, trying to destroy what Monkey has. No, ATCs, mind, mind you. Not not Marines. The Marines are dead. All the infantry are dead. The factory's about to go down. In fact, the Lancer's doing their best job, but that's just not going to be quick enough. The factory is going to go down, and with it, Elliot Den's entire production infrastructure, no way of rebuilding anything. These units he has now are his last, and while he could jump back to the unplayable pass to try to save, no, nothing. There's no way to save this. This is over. A few Zion Pulsars do go down, but the Zion Veer do get rid of at least one Tornado, and probably will get rid of both of them, ultimately. 
Actually, the Tethmere now, that's what he needs. Get the Tethmere on top of the Zionvere, and the Zionvere will die. But frankly, that Tornado is not particularly threatening. And a Zion Pulsar back to the southeast part of the base. Deal with that. Monkey not even building the Slipgate here, just, just has the foundation. And this Tornado soon to go down. This Lance here not even being attacked. Eliden has basically lost the game. And teleporting back with the Zion Pulsars to get rid of the ATHCs in the southeast corner. This is. This is basically game. Auto defense would be useful right about now, though, but this is still just the game. This is it. Eliden has lost. There's nothing he can do to get out of this. All he has going for him is that Monkey does not know where he is, but honestly, that's not going to last too long. Like that. Lack of knowledge. No, it doesn't matter. Eliden throws in the towel. That is game. So I'll have one more for you in just a moment. Once again, Monkey against Catalyte, and it will be on... It will be on Stoblind. Oh, I haven't seen that one in a while. And that is actually the first cast in a while that hasn't had too much heroes. Rather surprising. Although, admittedly, yes, I do have full control of the replays, but people don't upload enough replays. So I don't actually have that much control, ultimately. Anyway, that's what it's going to be. Monkey and Catalyte on Snowblind. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.